Welcome to Apollo Academy Minisode, where we're going to focus our attention on Frederick Douglass and his roles immediately following the Civil War. You know I try to stick to a five minute time frame, and we could talk for days about Frederick Douglass. This guy lived a full life. For example, he wrote not one, not two, but three autobiographies in his lifetime. That's why I'm going to stick to the years after the Civil War, 1865 till his death in 1895. And a source I'm going to highlight for this video is the dissertation on Frederick Douglass by Dr. Benjamin Quarles. His dissertation was an early full scale by biography that was soon made into a book in 1948. Okay, let's get started. After the Civil War ended, we know that three prominent amendments to the Constitution were enacted between 1865 and 1870. The 13th Amendment that banned slavery, the 14th Amendment that granted citizenship, and the 15th Amendment that granted the right to vote for freedmen. And support for these amendments, especially the 15th Amendment, owes a lot to Frederick Douglass. Douglas was passionate about the right to vote for African Americans and African Americans' voice in government. In 1869, just one year before the 15th Amendment was passed, Frederick Douglass was quoted saying, the ballot, or your vote, was a question of life and death for Southern black men. And after the 15th Amendment was passed, laws aimed at disenfranchising African Americans at the polls were passed. These became known as Black Codes, or Jim Crow Laws. And African American leaders like Frederick Douglass are going to work for decades to come to try to navigate life in America for freedmen and African Americans. As African American men gain the right to vote, we see that Douglass is going to shift his attention to women's right to vote. Douglass had been speaking about women's rights and women's rights to vote as early as the 1840s. And he would use his influence in the later decades to support women's suffrage. Even one of the most famous women's suffrage leaders, Susan B. Anthony, spoke at his funeral. Now let's move to the 1870s, where Frederick Douglass had a busy life. In 1871, Douglas took over a second newspaper. I'm sure you remember the first newspaper, the North Star, the abolitionist paper based in Rochester, New York. Douglas purchased the New National Era based in Washington, D.C. for $8,000. The New National Era only lasted a couple years, but was another example of the black press. Newspapers aimed at African American readers and African American issues. Douglas also found himself as the president and the leader of the newly formed Freedmen's Bank in the 1870s. The Freedmen's Bank was established after the Civil War to aid freedmen in investing their money safely and to give them financial education. Unfortunately, the Freedmen's Bank is going to end in 1874, and Douglas is going to keep busy into the later decades of the 1800s where he kept a rigorous touring schedule at $150 apiece. He traveled for many years coast to coast giving lectures about a variety of topics. In Douglas's later decades of the 1870s and 1880s, he continued his role as a mentor and as a leader of African Americans. He was the most well-known African American of his time, and he was looked to for his thoughts and opinions about African American matters of the day. In 1878, Douglas moved from his home in Rochester, New York, to Southeast Washington, D.C. It was a marvelous house that he called Cedar Hill, located today in D.C.'s Anacostia neighborhood. Today, the house serves as a National Historic Site. When you visit, I recommend going up to the front door and look towards the view of the Capitol. It was in this house where Frederick Douglass could walk five miles and serve his next two positions in the federal government. His last public office was in 1889 as the minister to the country of Haiti. Frederick Douglass spent his last day, February 20th, 1895, as a devoted member of public service. He attended a meeting of the Women's Council in Washington, D.C., where the Hoover Building stands today. After returning to Cedar Hill, after dinner, just before 7 o'clock, he collapsed and lost consciousness. News of the great statesman's death spread. Thousands lined up in Washington, D.C. and Rochester, New York for the viewing. Flags were flown at half-mast, and many state and local governments took the day off to honor Frederick Douglass's legacy. Today, Douglass's gravesite is at Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester, New York. Many monuments and memorials exist today commemorating Douglass's influence on civil rights, voting rights, and women's rights. Thanks for listening to this Pollock Academy mini-sode.